He never ever said, look at the tribe. No, he didn't. He never ever said, look at the money and the beauty. No, he said, look at the deen and the khuluq. Look at the religion and look at the character of the person. They are dedicated upright, even if they are poor. Look, we are seated here. Today we have a crisis. Girls and boys, especially girls, are looking for wealthy boys to marry. Not realizing that their own fathers and mothers were very poor when they married and they earned together and 20 years later they were able to afford a car, for example. So I encourage you, you don't have to look at someone who's got money. You got to look at someone who's dedicated with a good job maybe. Dedicated, they will, perhaps they are employed by themselves, they are trying their best. They are not just lazy sitting back, no. Dedicated person but he doesn't have much but we will get it together. You might lose out on a brilliant man just because you are looking for someone who's wealthy. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught this to us and we know it. So this is why we say, if you have someone who's wealthy as a bonus, alhamdulillah, but that must not be your main criteria. If you have someone who's very good looking, alhamdulillah, but that must not be your main criteria, although we are asked to look at what your spouse looks like. That's definite. So now, you know, there was once a boy who came to me. He said, you know, you ustaz, you guys, you tell us not to look at the beauty of a woman. And you know what you want us to marry someone who is really ugly? So I said, look, you got it wrong. The hadith did not say don't look at how beautiful they are. But the hadith says you can look at all these factors, but become successful by concentrating on the religion of the person, the character of the person. That is how you will be successful. Because if your main point was good looks, then you know that you are not going to go further because there will be no character, no mannerisms, no responsibility, not a good mother maybe. But if you have someone who's got both or three or four, then you are lucky. We say Nurun ala Nur. You have light upon light, mashallah. You are lucky, you are fortunate. So you say, for example, someone proposes, they are very good in, in deen and khuluq. We've mentioned what that means. You know, in their spirituality, their link with Allah, their religiousness, and at the same time, their character. But you are not happy with the way they look. No problem, you can turn it down. You can, you have the right. Then someone else. You are not happy perhaps with their deen, you can turn it down. Then a third person, you are not happy, for example, with their character, you can turn it down. Then there will come someone whom perhaps you are now okay with the way they look and they have immaculate character. That is a gift of Allah. So you will never get 100% what you want, never, ever, ever. 100% what you want, even the wealthiest of the wealthy don't have that. What's happened to us in the marriage discourse is that we actually market ourselves. The, the boy and the girl and even the families, they market themselves. So they turn the house into something it's not when they are coming over, when the in-laws are coming over. They turn themselves and their conversations into something that aren't genu genuine. That's not really a representation of who they are. How many families I can't even count and he's, he and she are in the counseling profession, they can tell you. How many families would come and say, we, did, we had no idea they were like this. We had no clue who we were dealing with. They were completely different people before, you know, and this, this kind of scamming, which you would think would happen in the sales industry is actually happening in the institution of marriage. And that's a crisis as a matter of fact. We offer, you know, in some of the more, I guess, forward thinking families that aren't as conservative, quote unquote, they say, okay, no, let the boy and girl talk to each other. Let them email one another, let them have a few conversations. But at this point, both of them are so like blind, and they're so interested in just getting the, 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 the celebration and the, you know, the, the new dress and the, you know, the gifts and the, you know, all this stuff. They're so caught up in the hype and all the congratulations they're getting and all the phone calls and text messages that even when they talk to each other, it's actually empty fluff conversations. And they see the, what they want to see in the spouse. They don't, they're not able to have an intellectually sound conversation. A lot of times, the young men and the young women, because, you know, حُبُّ الْعَيْنِ لَا تَرَى 
you know, or Ainul Hubasif, La Tara. The the love, the eye of love can't see. You know, well, you're already infatuated with the idea, so it's a, you have a hard time seeing any flaws. And that infection actually lasts a little bit longer even after marriage, for the first couple of weeks. <laughs> you can't see any flaw in your spouse. Even the way she sneezes you, like it's amazing. SubhanAllah, the way the boogers just spread out, it's, you know. You know, marriage has almost become like a very difficult sale. You know, you go to a car dealership and the, the car salesman presents his best self and the best features of the car, right? And he gets really offended if you ask difficult questions, right? And if you, if you start asking about the transmission problems that have been reported previously or the recalls or anything else, he'll just, you know, I don't know if I want to deal with this. So first, my encouragement to the families and to the young people that are looking to get married is to first to, to be mature in this process. The, there's a place for love and emotions and infatuation and I tell you, you have to put the brakes on that until the marriage is really, really close and everything else is settled. There's some other really serious things that need to be settled first, you know. Then the other thing I want to talk to is the elders, specifically the elders in our communities. You people are so worried sometimes about your messed up kids that you say maybe if we marry him to a good girl or we marry her to a good boy, things will work out fine. So all the really messed up things you know about your child, you don't tell anyone. You don't tell even the family that you're dealing with and you keep it hidden as best you can because if they found out, they wouldn't marry your child. And on top of that, of course, you're suffering from some kind of schizophrenia in which you tell yourself the lie so much that we have a good boy that you start believing it yourself. And in the face of reality, I mean, your child is coming home, you're, that's not a child, it's a man. Your, your son is coming home at 2, 3 in the morning, he can't even stand up straight. Oh, he must have been making tahajjud. The, you know, the tafsir seminar must have been late or... Come on. A lot of times our parents know that the, man ha the young man has a drug problem. He's got an alcohol problem. He's got a clubbing problem. I, I'm not even qualified for this sort of thing. I get emails, brother, how they say, you know, we got, he, he used to go to the masjid, we saw him making i'tikaf, he was praying, he even has a little bit of a beard, alhamdulillah, it's a good boy. And then, you know, my parents got me married to him, and I thought he it was okay. The first time we went out to eat, true story, first time we went out to eat, he ordered a beer. And I'm sitting there going, what's going on? What, what are you doing? He goes, what's, what's the big deal? You know? Why, why are you flipping out? Calm down. And this is the, re this is the reality of like, the lack of foundation in, in many marriages. And so we shouldn't complain about the divorce rate because they're sometimes really justifi justifiable. There's some really serious situations out there that we have to deal with. And I'm not advocating for divorce. But I am saying, look, there's a reason these kinds of things are happening. And there's some really fundamental realities that we're choosing to close our eyes to. Someone is interested in your daughter, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Others are struggling to get married, so firstly thank Allah. Remember this, look at it that way. Others are struggling to get a decent guy. Others are struggling to get married. But someone is interested in your daughter, but because his family lives across the river, and we live on this side of the river, or we come from a city, and they come from further down south or up north, we say, no, I don't want, why? Don't you know where they come from? Is that Islam? Come on, where did you come? So now when there is depression in your home, blame yourself, don't blame Islam. When there is chaos and everyone doesn't talk to you, I would rather the child make a mistake to marry the wrong person than to lose the child's mind. Because today, it is our fault, we blame religion to say, no, Allah has taught us this and that. When we don't understand what we have done, we have just been selective. We choose what suits us because we are worried about our own reputation and prestige. How can my daughter marry this man when he doesn't really have anything? To be honest, your grandfather had nothing. The Prophet ﷺ says, if a proposal comes in your direction and the person happens to be one of a decent deen and decent character, then let him get married. If you don't do that, there will be great chaos, corruption, confusion on earth. There are so many people who are extremely wealthy, who have treated their wives like slaves. Or without any form of respect, no respect, 
They have no trustworthiness within them. Whereas there are others who perhaps would not be able to afford the luxuries of the world, but they treat their spouses with utmost respect. And they are so happy living in a hut. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us happiness of the dunya and the akhirah. You know, a long time ago, we could easily say that, hey, this son or this boy or this girl is from this family, so they are good, so marry them. Today, you are an individual. Your family can be the best and you can be the worst. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.